Crafters, Sarah here, and today I wanted to talk to you about Ranger and Tim Holtz alcohol inks. Now I know alcohol inks have been on the market for quite some time now, but I feel like they often get overlooked for just how versatile they can, they can be. So today I'm hoping to re-energize your crafty little brains with alcohol inks, as well as show you a fun technique towards the end. So a little bit of basics about alcohol inks is they are a dye-based ink. And once you put them on the surface, the alcohol that's inside of them is going to dry out, just leaving the dye. These are translucent inks and they are made for non-porous surfaces, meaning any kind of surface, surface that is not going to absorb the ink. So think plastics, transparencies, and metals. You cannot use these with a standard scrapbook paper or cardstock. Uh, Ranger makes alcohol ink cardstock that you can use. This is specially made for the inks. And this is also pretty much the same thing as their glossy paper. So these are great to have. If you really want to have alcohol inks inside of a scrapbook page or an art journal, I highly suggest priming your paper with some good quality gesso. Alcohol inks currently are available in 48 different colors in the Adirondack line, so not the Distress. And the Adirondack line contains brights, lights, and earth tones. There are also five different mixatives. These are going to be a little bit more opaque, and they've got a mixing ball in them that you'll want to hear that shaky shaky to help mix up those pigments with the dye. Some good accessories to have with your inks is you are going to definitely want the alcohol blending solution. What this does is that you can use it to lighten your alcohol ink colors. It can blend your alcohol ink colors and then it will also remove them. So if you ink a piece of ideology blue and you don't really like it, you decide you want it to be red, just squirt some blending solution on top, wipe it off, and you can start all over using the colors you wanted. You're also going to want a blending tool and you're going to want the felt pads. I'm going to emphasize using the felt pads with alcohol inks and not the foam pads that we're used to with our distress inks. There's a huge difference, not only in what they're actually made out of, but the thickness of them. If you put alcohol inks on the foam pad, it's going to absorb into and down into the bottom and you're not going to be able to get to your ink. With the felt ones, the ink can settle just right on that very top layer and that's how you're able to get the ink off of the felt and onto your project. Another good thing to note is that uh, you can use any kind of felt with these. I took a class with Tim a few years back and you can use any kind that's around your craft room, he said. People just like what Ranger sells because it's specially made to fit the blending tool. So as I clean up here, I want to give you one tip about storing alcohol inks. Oh, I almost forgot the pen. So there's the alcohol ink pen. This is great. It's two-sided. You've got a fine tip side and then you've got more of a brush tip. And Ranger also sells replacement nibs for those if yours get old and worn down. These are great. The pens are if you want to, let's say, color a stamped image with your alcohol inks. All right, so now as I clean up, I kind of want to give you guys a couple notes on storing these and and using them. You can totally leave the caps off as you're working on a project with the alcohol inks, but you're really gonna wanna make sure when you're done crafting for the day that you completely put the cap back on and screw it on all the way. If not, what I've done before is accidentally left my cap off um, or not completely screwed on and I accidentally tipped over my bottle of red pepper ink and I got it all yuckied up and I made a big old stain on my craft desk. All right, so now we can discuss a little bit of the fun things we can do. One of my favorite things, and it's kind of addictive, with alcohol inks is using it on Ranger sheet plastic. It is so much fun. If you die cut it and with any of his uh, Sizzix shapes, um, and then you can shrink it down. This is a butterfly my daughter actually made, and we layered it and then alcohol inked all of the different parts. One thing to note too, is that if you ink it before you shrink, ink before you shrink, you're gonna get a really um, much more intense color. This is a brown that I inked before I shrunk it. And then this was a clear one that I inked after. So depending on the look you want, you can go either way. Another fun thing to ink is ideology. I love my ideology parts and the fact that I can change the colors on these makes me really excited. Um, and this is, as opposed to using like the distress paint, you're still gonna be able to see all of that fun detail in the metal work with the alcohol ink. It literally looks like you just made it into a blue metal. 
And with this one, what I did was I alcohol inked it first and then I took the distress paint over it, wiped it off. And so now I've got blue on blue and that really makes the words pop out on that little word tag. Another fun thing that you can use it on is Tim's fragments. These are really great to do. You can back these even with a piece of scrapbook paper or a photo and then ink it to give it a different color. Another fun thing to do is buttons. If you have clear buttons or even color buttons, this used to be one of Tim's white pearl colored little flowers in his ideology accoutrement set. You can grunge up one of his bottles here in glass. Um, I've seen a lot of people use it for making their own glitter. I made these two in just a few seconds. Um, all I did was pour a little bit of rock candy distress glitter in about five, six drops of alcohol ink, and then mix it with a popsicle stick. And you've got your own glitter, um, custom colored, and you can make it brighter, lighter, darker, however you want by adding more ink. Another fun thing to do that I really like with alcohol inks is melt art. Uh, maybe you want to get into melt art, but you don't have the colors um, that Ranger offers to dye the melt art inks. Well, you can go ahead and make your project clear like I did with this one. It was clear Udi before on a texture tread with a cookie cutter. And then once it was fully cooled off, I did um, red alcohol ink. And then I took a little bit of the gold mixative and rubbed that over the top. So that's pretty cool. You don't have to feel obligated to own all of the glitters, all of the melt art inks or whatever. Alcohol ink really brings in the versatility to the rest of the products that are available in Ranger's line. So now that, oh, one other thing I wanted to show you was I'm going to insert a picture of the Lumi light that I made for rain, um, for a craft test dummies a while ago. Um, it was a review and I put transparency uh, with alcohol ink in between shapes on the Lumi pieces that I cut with my Cricut. That's not going to make much sense as I talk about it, but hopefully you'll see what I'm talking about when I bring up the photo. So a fun little technique that I figured out the other day, kind of by accident, is doing a transfer slash stamping with your alcohol ink and using some of the flat backsides of Tim's ideology line. So how we're going to do that is with Ranger and Vintage's glaze, which is an extender in itself. So you couldn't just alcohol ink a piece and then go ahead and stamp it. I mean, you could, but you're not going to get as good as a transfer. So by putting the piece out after you've inked it into the glaze, you're going to re-wet it and get that ready to give a good transfer. So I already have some glaze in a piece of cut and dry foam and I've already inked up one of my ink blending tools. So I'm going to go ahead and just ink up a piece of ideology. And you can use tweezers if you don't like getting your fingers dirty. Um, Stick it in your glaze and then go ahead, press it down onto your tag, and there you go. You have a transferred gear. And it's a little bit shiny still from the glaze, but it'll dry flat. There we go. So let's try another one just for fun while I've got you guys here. Do alcohol ink, glaze to tag. And you want to pull off your ideology pretty quick, otherwise it's going to dry and it's going to stick to your tag or your piece of paper and it's going to pull up that paper and any ink or anything that you have underneath it. Go ahead and do one more for the road. Ink it, glaze it, stamp it. Pull it up. And there you have it. Pretty cool. Now, one other, and I think this might almost be better than the actual stamp and transfer that I just showed you, was after a while when you do this and going from the glaze to the ink to the paper and the back and forth, you create this really kind of awesome grungy buildup on your findings, which make them look more rustage, vintage, and deliciously grungy than they were before. So I thought that was also kind of a pretty happy accident. Well, you guys, I hope you learned some more things about alcohol ink. I hope I inspired you to try them out in maybe a new way. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Thanks, crafters. Talk to you soon.